Greetings to all of you from Kenya. We are incredibly excited to be joining you today for WCN's amazing virtual expo. My name is Belinda Lomaki, the co-founder and executive director of the Grevy Zebra Trust. We work to protect and recover the endangered Grevy Zebra and its habitat here in Kenya. These incredible animals, which are right behind me here, are the largest zebra species in Africa and the most endangered. There are only 3,000 Grevy zebra left in the wild today, and over 95% of those are found here in Kenya. Grevy zebra are uniquely adapted to survive in very arid, harsh environments, and they can go up to five days without drinking water but nothing can prepare even the most resilient of species for what we are currently experiencing. We have had two years of failed rainy seasons here in Northern Kenya. And together with the already degraded environment that was here, the cumulative impact of that is that there really isn't enough grazing left to sustain the wildlife and the livestock that share these resources together. Our team is doing everything it can to help Grevy Zebra survive this crisis. With permission from the Kenya Wildlife Service, we have started supplementary feeding to ensure that Grevy Zebra get an extra boost in their diet. And I'm now handing over to Andrew Latoura, our ecological monitoring officer, to tell you more about this work. Hi everyone, great to meet you today the WCN Expo. I am Andrew Letra from Samburu, Kenya. Uh, here in the field, what we are currently doing is that we are following gravies, uh, big herds of gravies and try to supplement them. Because of the situation, we are now experiencing a lot of uh, drought and now we have to supplement gravies for, uh, to maintain their health. We are monitoring three main areas and we are following up with 500, over 500 gravy zebras. And so far, we've already fed them with 4,000 uh, bales of hay. Of these herds that we are following, 50% are lactating females and foals, and 10% are pregnant females. We have a dedicated team within these particular areas, working over 6,000 hours in these particular areas and try to follow up with gravies on a daily basis. And we're not only benefiting gravies, we also have baboons, uh, oryx, buffaloes, and we even have a hippo that we have uh, taken care of and feeding with the, the hay. Mm -hmm. This whole feeding exercise is not only physically uh, demanding or involving, but also emotional. It impacts the team emotionally. We get sad sometimes to find, wake up and find a gravy that's very weak and can't stand even to, to stand and eat the hay. And we even witness a grave zebra that gave birth to a, to a steel, uh, had a steel bath, and the mother was trying to lick the fall just to wake it up. And it was a very emotional moment for the team watching the mother trying to wake up, to wake, to wake up the fall. Little did she know that the fall was, was not going to make it. Later on, the team gave it an honor by burying the fall. Like that's how much they could give, you know, connect the, with that female. And yet, every day we celebrate. Five days ago, we witnessed a grave zebra giving uh, birth. And we are happy and excited monitoring this fall on a daily basis. This cute fall is a sign of hope among other falls that through this drought period we continue praying for the November October rains and as we continue feeding these zebras to make sure that they are stable and they can go make through this drought period uh, for, uh, for stability of the population 
and growth. These interventions are life-saving, and we do them because we cannot afford to, to lose the conservation gains made over the last 15 years. Before this drought began in 2020, Grevy zebra was stable, and in some areas they were increasing. The Grevy Zebra Trust's work is based around the, the connectedness of people, wildlife, and the rangelands that they depend on. And over to Peter Lalampar, our programs director, to tell you more. Thanks, Bell. It's really great to connect with you through the expo. As I grew up as a boy, I used to go out hunting livestock. I regard wildlife as my first teacher. Their behavior alerted me when there is danger. This enabled me to tighten up my hunting skills. Because of that, we are able to coexist with wildlife for a century. Our land has no fences. It's an open system allowing for free movement. However, this free movement has been disrupted by increasing settlements around permanent infrastructure, such as schools and clinics. This change in lifestyle also means that most of our livestock stays with, it, with us where we are settled, and this has led to overgrazing across the landscape. As Grave Zebra Trust, we work with communities to heal the land, and we do this in two ways. The first is planning the grazing patterns of livestock to ensure that plants have time to grow. The second is by restoring already bare areas through the construction of erosion control ditches and planting indigenous grass seeds. Central to the long-term success of this work, the indigenous communities that own the land must drive the entire process. To achieve this genuine ownership, we work through village-based committees. I'm here in Nesunye, and I want to introduce you to Nesunye Village-Based Committee, which includes elders, women, and the youth. Fibisi. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, <laughs> It's incredible to see that by just planning the aggressive pattern, Nesunye village was able to grow more grass, which enabled them to keep their cattle for two years of drought. There are two other villages that have had similar success thanks to their strong village leadership. Collectively, the three villages have had successful grazing plants covering 3,000 acres. In the next two years, our goal is to work with 30 more villages to achieve similar results, which covers 60,000 acres in a critical grave zebra habitat. 
<laughs> and now over to Dr. David Kimiti, our Director of Research and Impact, to tell you how we monitor land health. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Um, happy to be here with you today, everyone, at the WCN Expo. We, as part of our rangeland strategy, we've also designed and implemented a comprehensive rangeland monitoring strategy to ensure that we are checking the impact of our rangelands work. We do this through two main ways. The, pr the first one being quantitative data collection. We do this primarily through the Land PKS or the Land Potential Knowledge System app, which is a mobile phone application. Um, that we implement while in the field. We supplement this using other ecological monitoring indicators that we collect also do, uh, while we're in the field. And the second data collection that we do is qualitative or semi-quantitative data collection. This is primarily through the use of fixed point photography, which is very useful for large areas or areas that we need the community to monitor themselves more frequently than we are able to get into the field to do. Our rangelands data is collected by a dedicated team, which is led by our ecological monitoring officer. He's supported ably by field officers and interns, mainly drawn from the communities that we work in. Our team of scouts, ambassadors, warriors, and grassland champions also provide critical gravy zebra movement and health data. This ultimately allows us to add other types of data into our analysis, including remote sensing data, which further allows us to assess trends in rangeland productivity and health. We are then able to compare that to gravy zebra habitat use and health status, and this allows us to track the impact of our interventions. Through this rangelands monitoring strategy, uh, we hope to refine our rangelands interventions to make sure that we are improving the health of the rangelands that the communities rely on for their pastoral livelihoods and that gravy zebra rely on for their habitat. Thank you, and back to you, Bell. As we wait for the drought to break, we are laying the groundwork to scale what Naisunyai village has achieved. At the same time, we are also keeping as many Grevy zebra alive as possible. This gives us immense hope for the future of the species and for the livelihoods of the people that share the same resources. We could not do any of this without your support. And we are so grateful for everybody who has shown up and walked alongside us on this journey and we look forward to walking further with you. Thank you. <laughs>